That's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We head straight to a second conversation right here. In what could be best described as a major milestone and significant boost ahead of the commencement of port operations like a deep sea port, on Friday took delivery of three STS cr cranes and 10 rubber tied granites and uh, also witnessed the arrival of the first vessel to Beth at the port. The cranes and the RTG equipment will be used in the container terminal, which will be operated by the Lecky Free Trade, uh, you know, free port terminal. The vessel left Shanghai, China on May the 17, 2022, and arrived at the Lecky Deep Sea Port at about noon Nigerian time on the 1st of July, 2022. We do have a guest joining our conversation this morning. It'd be very but manual. He's an entrepreneur and investor. It's good to have you join us. Thank you. All right. We probably seem to be having some feedback from your end, but I'm hoping that that can be sorted as we proceed in the course of the conversation. But what do you make of all of this development with the Lecky uh, Deep Sea Port and the free, uh, the Lecky Free Zone? Well, it's, it's indeed a welcome development for us as, um, as Nigerians because um, our seaports have, over the years, become very much um, incompetitive. They've not been competitive for quite a long time. Owing to the outused lifespan that they were built with, you know, most of those ports we have in Nigeria had stayed beyond the years. And every project that had lived as long as that would definitely be needed in region. That's why you find out that the revenue that uh, have been accrued from seaports has actually nosed dived over the years. So, like the seaport coming on stream sometime later this year, first quarter of next year, is a welcome development for, for us as investors. Okay. But, but, you know, th those who actually reside, I mean, we're talking about residents of this area now and are complaining of uh, the road. We're talking about access road to the seaport and the fact that apart from the deep seaport, you have older businesses in this access. So you have the Dangote, um, you know, refinery and all the businesses around it. Number one on the list concern is that there are several concerns as regards, you know, congestion. Another is the fact that the road is not motorable. Access road to this uh, sport is not motorable. So do you still think that this is a, a welcome development? Well, it's um, overall, it's a welcome development because um, uh, it's obviously going to improve on our internally generated revenue of Nigeria and it will improve on the index for doing business in Nigeria, because most businesses would have made a detour to other neighboring countries like um, West African countries and Central African countries like Ghana, Togo, Benin Republic, and, and the lot. So with this um, seaport coming on stream, it's definitely going to impact positively. But so from the infrastructural point of view and the people living around that environment being Lagos, they would definitely get um, a backlash on such an investment because such investments are properly thought through and you should ordinarily would be situating such an investment in a developing area that has a very good, um, uh, what they call, road network. I think that's part of the problems that uh, the APAPA and the TINCAN is currently uh, faced with whereby where they were domiciled are now fully grown, fully built up, and it's now a major bane of concern to, to residents around the neighborhood. But from an over point of view, from an investment point of view, and from the federal government point of view, meaning if they would have had it, it, it's going to be a, a, a fantastic deal for them because it's generating revenue. But from the point of view of the, the residents around Lagos and around um, the West generally, they will be having a boom with business-related activities, and it comes with its own negative. And the negative it will come in with would be such negatives as around um, um, 
um, poor, poor infrastructures and um, they weren't you know, such infrastructures. So it's going to be a major ask from people living in Lagos to have to contend with a third major seaport and such a seaport that would most likely attract a mob of other business related activities from the West and Central African countries back into Nigeria. So it will come with its own attendant uh, cost, which is going to be felt pretty soon when this starts. All right, but well, moving forward, I mean, uh, a lot of Nigerians in different parts of the country have reacted differently, and some people are saying decongest, you know, the Lagos ports and depopulate Lagos. That's, you know, the argument right here. Uh, that would actually be a solution. Some people think that with all of the concentration on Lagos, it renders all other ports across different parts of the country useless and non-functional. Absolutely. Absolutely. I turn out to be one of those um, school of thoughts that feel strongly that um, the over-concentration of the seaports and the ports-related activities in Lagos, it's obviously counterproductive to not just Lagos, to the country as a whole, because you're looking at infrastructural layout that Lagos would be um, subjected to. It's huge. It's huge, and it, it's not feasible for that to happen immediately because it's funds related. And even if the funds were to be available, it will take the Lagos state government and the federal government a couple of years to be able to achieve that. Okay, so let's get straight to it now. We're talking about, uh, you know, lucky deep sea ports, how operation, and other, you know, deep sea ports across the country. Yeah, um, we think, we from the Investors Forum point of view, we think um, it's a good development, but I think the federal government needs to spread its um, search and its investment uh, drive towards um, um, driving the process in other parts of the country because if investments are not that, that diverse for the, the country, you'll find out that there will be a clock. And when there is a clock, States like Lagos would begin to suffer infrastructural um, wear and tear that is suffering. And the government would obviously not be able to achieve its set of goals. You know, and for as much as possible, right from um, the, the year 1912, when um, um, the Port Harcourt Seaport was, um, um, came into inception, as far back as that, uh, it just took, it took Lagos about three years or about four years for them to uh, come on stream with uh, Lagos and Papa and uh, Tinker. The thing that behind such investment and behind such direction, that there was a need for them to displace the port operation in the country for it not to have the kind of effects that we're suffering. And for us, from the investment point of view, we think that should be revisited and that should be looked at thoroughly. Because in a case like River State, you have two, three seaports. And out of the three seaports, they're doing like 40% of their capacity. Or you have a case in Lagos where the seaports in Lagos are doing as much as 150 to 200% of its installed capacity. That's why you see the problem around the gridlocks in, river, in, the, in Lagos as against what you have in, Lagos, in rivers. So what the, what the um, port authority simply needs to do is to pay attention to the other seaports like Port Harcourt and see how they could rev them up to, up to 100%. Then you find out that the, the development and the growth of businesses in the country will become diverse and will become, more, will become more efficient in doing business. Because most businesses, most of our businesses, the challenge we have is the fact that we're all clogged up in one little space called Lagos. So with this one now, with this thing, the, the, the commissioning of the naked deep seaport, it's even going to make that same situation even worse the way it is. That's basically what it is. So, but for us, we think it's a welcome development, but we still think the federal government needs to do more by dispersing the investment around the country for efficiency. Because for every investor, what comes to mind first is what's going to be my turnaround time. If my turnaround time is going to be too long, 
then I begin to think about alternatives. That's why you find out that different, different investors are rather making use of uh, ports around um, the Republic and Ghana, Tema in Ghana, Togo. Because they find out that the turnaround time is shorter if they go through that route. Even if it is that they will still use that same route to come back into Nigeria, but they still prefer it because they feel the turnaround is short. So if the federal government now pays that it pays as much interest as what we're, we're, we're recommending for them, opening up the seaports in Port Harcourt to grab up to about 100%, you find out that our internal, obviously the federal government would be generating far more from the NPA than what it's generating. But, 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 but should you also blame, you know, the situation of where the port is? Uh, you, you need to consider that the importers and where their warehouses are, it's very important in this business. So it's a business, that's number one. And so if you have, if I have my business in Lagos and it's easy to have my warehouse here, we're also looking at revenue generation. We're talking about the traffic. Uh, what business do I have, um, you know, moving to other parts of the country where my business will not be thriving and then I don't have all of that traffic? That's another school of thought. No, 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 no. I think I think you 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 got it wrong this time. The bottom line of it is from from the ports in Lagos, in any any of the ports, be it Tinkan, Apapa, and Warsaw, Lekki today, to your to your warehouse, you'll be paying for hauling your goods from the neighborhood of um, between five hundred thousand to a million naira. Just from the seaports to where your your your, your what do you call your your warehouses, but as against hauling from Portacos to Lagos, that you have a flat rate of five hundred thousand naira to haul that same goods from Portacos to Lagos. So it really does not make too much of a sense for you to do that. But what is really driving the 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 allure for for setting up in Lagos as against dispersing and spreading investments across the country? Simply is the fact that you have a seaport close to you and you want to have that same facility around where the seaport is. But if those other seaports in other parts of the country are made to function efficiently, you'll find out that just like in the 70s and in the 80s and in the late early 90s, you find out that you have most of these um, factories and most of these uh, facilities in other parts of the country, not just all concentrated the way it is in Lagos today. Because you find out that prior to this time, other parts of the countries had their own fair share of contribution to all of this when it comes to maritime-related activities. But for now, it's all clogged up in Lagos because of this policy. And I think it's something that the state government and the federal government need to um, have a handshake and see that they could, they could move the needle. Because that is the silver bullet. That's the way we could solve our problem. Because the seaport is far, far, the MPA is the, the contribution from the MPA is far below par as against what is expected from um, 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 uh, uh, parastatal like the NPA. Because if you just oppose what the NPA generates to what a small country like Benin Republic, the seaports generates or, or what Ghana or what Togo generates, yeah, you'll it, agree it with fairy. me that we're doing far below par from what is expected. It'd be fair. And where that problem is, is over-concentration in Lagos. It'd be fair. it's not just selling on the ports now. It's Selling on the citizens and the and the, the people that live in Lagos. Well, so you're saying that uh, importers do not uh, determine where you know this seaport. I mean, all of this is not a factor as to where you know seaports should be situated. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the, import, the importers don't really have a say on where this is. Do they have a say? I think they don't really do. The authorities do they even? that um, set up those uh, policies are basically the ones that. No, they don't have a say. The importers don't have a say. The importers, basically, what we do is to follow the direction that the federal government would have, um, would have placed. If the federal government's policy is concentrating all of the ports in Lagos, then obviously the investors and the importers would uh, concentrate the activities around Lagos. That's basically what it is. You know, if the other ports were to be encouraged to perform better, then obviously the investment will be dispersed across the country.
Mm. Well, Baba, some of all the concerns why you have, uh, you know, all the pots in the country, you have the worry. I mean, you want to talk about a worry. You want to also talk about the Calabar uh, port as well. And all the pots that you have apart from Lagos not being very functional is that um, the issue of dredging is also number one on the issue and the capacity to dredge and the cost of dredging. Do you think that, that, that that's also a, a concern? Is it an issue? Yes. For us at the Investors Forum, we're, we're a research-based investment forum, investment group. And all of what we do, we get centered around uh, researches. Now, that same story was told to all of us prior to this time in the 90, late 90s and uh, yeah, before now that the draft of the seaports are the problem around the eastern other seaports. But we took out a case study of that of the seaports in Port Harcourt. And from all our studies, we discovered that had, that had no business. The draft of the seaports, in fact, to tell you, the draft of the seaport in Port Harcourt has one of the best drafts in the country, next to none. And we had such back and forth, we had to engage, it got to the point where we had to engage the Federal Ministry of Transport, we engaged the MPA, and we were able to be, I mean, we were able to convince them, and today we've been vindicated, because the kind of vessels that are called Port Harcourt Seaports, old Port Harcourt Seaports, and Bonaire, are, are, are interesting, because they're about the biggest vessels that have called the port of Nigeria in the past, um, in the past 100 years. So that leads to rest the story about the draft of the seaport in Port Harcourt. I would not be able to extend that same research to other seaports like Calabar and, um, and uh, the one in Florida. We would not be able to do that. But the ports in Port Harcourt we were able to establish that. And it's on the back of that discovery of how that those vessels called Port Harcourt and um, and um, and uh, yeah, so we'll be vindicated on that. So, Portacot Port has no business with uh, issues around the draft or the depth of the of the sea of the water. Well, so so do you think that um, the question here is if 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 this is all you know the answer to it, then why is there so much concentration on Lagos? Why is there so much concentration? And why have we not been able to decentralize the ports? Because some people think that the popu you know, the congestion that Lagos is faced with will be solved if we decentralize the ports. Now, those who live close to the free trade zone, the lucky free trade zone, or the free zone, however you want to put it, and uh, the fact that you're also going to be having the lucky sea port, uh, which is in, in process right now, uh, also very worried about you know movement the roads are not very uh motorable and so the issue of congestion traffic uh which would also trickle down to every other person cannot be uh, overlooked because you can take for example what's going on in a papa you know the tinker uh, port so why is there over concentration in lagos and why can we decentralize the ports What's really going on? Well, from a business, from a business, from a government business point of view, it's good business for Lagos State Government. And um, I think the Lagos State Government, I must give it to the Lagos State Government, over the years, they've, they've had their eyes on the ball and they've looked at the big picture. And the big picture for them, obviously, is to drive the internally generated revenue. And they've seen the port as one soft tool that they should be able to use to achieve that. And believe you me, you can take it any day. The Lagos State government had done very well in driving the rev internally generated revenue through the seaport. Because if you check the Port Harcourt port as against the Lagos port in the 80s, you find out that the internally generated revenue of River State and that of Lagos State were more or less neck to neck within about the same range. But ever since with the invent of uh, the, the boom and uh, of, of oil, the states, other states like Rivers and the, the other states in the Delta lost the ball. So 
the Lagos State paid more attention to that of um, other investment-related areas like the seaport. And they were able to attract further investments around the seaport, and they were able to work very much well with the bureaucratic system in the country. And they've been able to drive the IGR. Now, if you look at the level, the amount of IGR or Lagos State generates today as against that of other, of other states, you'll find out that they are, they are nowhere to be compared. They're incomparable. But all of those growths in those IGR is now coming with its own um, backlash. And it's the backlash that the people, the residents in Lagos are facing, are faced with now, where you find out that the infrastructure can't really carry the amount of business that the Lagos State, um, that the Lagos State attracts. So it's, it's a situation whereby the federal government would have to look at the bigger picture. Because if you over-concentrate all of this investment and you play along with the bureaucratic um, 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 maneuvers of, of, the, of the players in Lagos, as against the other parts of the country, you find out that Lagos will be in where it is today and it will keep remaining where it is today. Because for Lagos State to attract the kind of investment in infrastructure to open up other parts of Lagos or to open up the major infrastructure that would carry this amount of businesses that are going to flow into the city, it will take so much. But well, on the other hand, you can't blame them for what, what they have, what they have today. On the other hand, you would expect that the other states that have that same potential should begin to look at CITO and begin to look at the crystal ball and see how they could attract such kind of um, investment or such kind fairy, of Bob around the maritime sector in the state. So that's what I think they should do. So I don't think I would be here. Well, thank you so much for all of the insight that you've brought. But I, I was just hoping that we have more time to talk about this. Just several concerns. A lot of persons have questioned whether, you know, the Lecky port is actually, uh, you know, uh, a, the work, the handiwork of the state government, as it were, or it's actually a maritime partnering, you know, with uh, the private sector to have this but you know it will be a conversation for another time and how can the states you know come to that point where they look at the crystal ball where you have all of this concentration that you say it's also responsible i mean it's the federal government's responsibility what can these states really 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 do you know to ensure that you have this uh, decentralization because it would also trickle down you know to population and the stress that's going on in the city of Lagos. Many thanks for being part of the breakfast. We appreciate your time. Ibiferi Pop Manuel is a president of Rivers Entrepreneurs and Investors Forum. Thank you so much. Well, that's the size of a conversation right here. We'll take a break when we return. Hopefully, we're able to come with the second topic right here. Stay with us. <laughs>